Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy and thank you for tuning in today and you'd be glad you did because you could save a ton of money with what I'm about to show you today. I've teamed up with Cap City Muffler for this video for an installation of a CAT security system or a catalytic converter security system on my 2004 Honda Element. Now, catalytic converter theft, well, it's been a thing for quite some time. In fact, back in the day when I was at the dealership, there were 30 vehicles in one night that had their catalytic converters stolen. Brand new vehicles uh, cost the dealership more than $30,000. Catalytic converters are not cheap, and I have three words as to why. Platinum, palladium, and rhodium. If you look up the cost of these metals, some of them are worth more than gold. Hence the reason catalytic converter theft is such a thing, and in difficult times, well, theft is on the rise. That said, they have created a system for the uh, element that I will be installing today. They also have another very popular uh, catalytic converter to be stolen is off of a Prius. They have a system for the Prius as well. I'm not gonna be installing one of those in this video, but there'll be links in the description to additional information and stuff like that. But watch this video and check out how we're gonna basically make it almost impossible to steal the catalytic converter on this 2004 Honda element. I have a couple of notes before we get started with the installation of the CAT security system on the Honda Element behind me. Number one, what you're about to witness is what I would consider worst case scenario. <laughs> and what I mean when I say that is, my, my Element is all wheel drive, it has side steps, and it's pretty darn rusty. And as you'll see during the course of the video, those three things contribute to a lot of additional time for installation of one of these kits. In reality, it would probably take you longer to watch this video than it would to complete the installation under normal circumstances. Probably about 10 to 15 minutes, I would say. Additionally, I did not follow the instructions like I should, and that's on me. But let's play a little game with that. I'm going to post a link in the description to the PDF instruct installation instructions of this kit down in the description. So you can go down in the description and check out the installation instructions. Look those over, watch the video, and see if you can spot where I screwed up. And then back towards the end of the video, I'll let you know exactly how I screwed up and you can see if you're right. Well, I'll see you then. Back to the installation, Eric. Take it away. The kit comes with the CAT security system, the brackets to mount it, also this rear bracket for added security, all the fasteners and everything you need to mount it up, a couple of stickers, and an instruction manual. One special tool that you may need to pick up if you're installing one of these kits on a two-wheel drive Honda Element is a heavy-duty rivet gun or a larger rivet gun. And you may be able to rent one of these from a parts store or perhaps borrow one from a buddy, but if you are installing this kit on a two-wheel drive Honda Element, you will need a heavy-duty rivet gun to do it. This is the catalytic converter on the Element. And yes, I know it's pretty rusty under here and this thing doesn't look like much, but trust me, it's worth about 1100 bucks from Honda. So that's the reason why we want to protect this thing. The most common way catalytic converters are stolen is with one of these, a Sawzall. They just come in underneath and they basically just cut it right out and they don't care what's in the way. And oftentimes there's other damage that results. Uh, the system that we're going to install basically enshrouds this whole thing and makes it, well, like I said, virtually impossible to come in here with say a Sawzall and get this thing out of here. Let's get started. Now I've already sort of looked things over and test fit things and I'm already seeing a problem. Not just the uh, corrosion on the fasteners that I'm gonna be removing to install some of the brackets for this, but also because I have uh, these side steps here. Specifically, it's this bracket that needs to be installed. And as you can see, that clearly interferes with this. We'll have to remove this fastener and this fastener for the heat shielding in order to attach this. Now, when you're working under a vehicle like this, particularly one as rusty as this one is, I strongly recommend you wear your safety glasses to keep that junk out of your eyes while you work. Now, the instructions state to start on the driver's side and they want you to remove this 10 millimeter holding these O2 sensor brackets on and in the all wheel drive model like I have here, this bolt for the all wheel drive strap or for the drive shaft strap. Now, with as crusty as these things are, I'm gonna sort of ignore the instructions for the moment and soak these down with as much penetrating oil as I can get up in there on both of these because they sort of look like, well, they're gonna give me some trouble. So I'm gonna let that soak in while I work on the other side. On the passenger side, it's this 10 millimeter and this 12 millimeter that need to be removed. But I've already discussed that we're gonna have some issues here, so I'm gonna create this clearance. So I'm also going to uh, try to soak these two fasteners down with some penetrating oil, hoping 
that gets down in there as I work on the other stuff. I made an executive decision and decided this would be easier off the vehicle, so I'm gonna take it off. Now, weirdly, these are 13 millimeter, which is something you don't often see on hunt. That's a little early to say, but I'm very happy that came off the way it did. And I suppose as long as we're here, we could take those fasteners out. Please, please, please. I think you come in under the shield, under the shielding. That's how it's supposed to live. I'm not tightening these down yet. I'm just using them to locate the rear part, which we're going to need to drill a hole to put a rivet through. This is one of the bolts that was supplied. And because this is thicker, it needs a longer bolt. Thank you for making that 10 millimeter, just like the original. Let's drill this hole back here. So it has the factory faster installed here the uh, supplied 10 millimeter here. We're gonna have to drill, I believe, a 3 16 inch hole through here so we can rivet this down. The longest rivet or the biggest rivet in the kit is the one that goes in here. Now I've measured it with my caliper and the closest I've come to is a quarter inch drill bit. So I'm using a quarter inch drill bit here. And I'm just using this as a template and just going straight up through. Oh, that's perfect. And I'm not going to install it yet. <clears throat> I'm going to get this part sorted out and then we'll get it installed in case we need to take this off and put it on to get it where it needs to be. Let's see if I guessed right. Ah, oh, nailed it. Like, so nailed it. Hang on a minute before I get too happy. I'm just gonna slide it up over the outside of this and then put it in there and see if it's good. It'll work fine. All right, giant rivet gun, do your thing. I'm gonna tighten these other two fasteners down so I don't forget. Cross our fingers and hope that the penetrating oil did its job. Well, that was a giant hunk of snow that came down on my cart. Yes, the joys of working in the winter came right from there. Let's try a bigger weapon. Gonna try my special socket. That's a win. Thank you. Will we be as lucky with this one? Sort of knew that was coming. It appears my efforts to save this have been unsuccessful because despite the fact that I can turn it, it's not loosening up, which means the nut or, that was on the backside is broken loose. So there's nothing for it at this point. Although it's kind of fortuitous that, uh, you know, it did break loose because I'll be able to knock the head off of this. I think probably install a nut cert in its place. <laughs> Well, we have the hole and I have some nut certs. So basically I'm gonna put a nut cert up in there and redo those threads. For those of you not familiar with what a nut cert is, this is one here. Now this will go into just a regular hole and with thin sheet metal like what we have here, this is kind of the perfect thing for it. And it works with a rivet gun. When we install it with the rivet gun, what it does uh, when we can compress the rivet gun is it will pull this in and sort of sandwich it between the metal and hold this in place and have a new set of threads. This is an M6, which is pretty much the same bolt that was in there, the same eight millimeter by I think one, I'm not sure. Anyway, M6 nut cert is gonna take the place of what was there before. And thankfully they provided us with an additional fastener in the kit. So that will screw right into here when we're all done. I need to enlarge the hole slightly. Uh, 2164 is what I'm using here. And with this rivet gun, we'll install it. This will allow me to take that fastener and screw it right in. With that sorted, I can install the other bracket. I'm 
and reform that loop a little bit. Finally, the brackets are installed. Next step is gonna to be to install this uh, rear tab here. Gonna take one of the tamper-proof screws, one of the lock washers, run it through like that. They say to temporarily install it so you can rotate it up around the exhaust. So you can do that. I have all my screws at the ready so I can install them easily. They had a couple of tips for this. After you run it down, fill the heads with like RTV to prevent anybody from getting in there. But like if you really, really want to do this, get some green Loctite and install these. And you, you, it'll require heat to get them out. So hopefully you never have to service the converter. But that would be an added measure if you wanted to go there. So I've got all the fasteners started, but I'm not gonna run them down quite yet because there's also rivets that we install. And I'm gonna put those in now so that uh, I don't have to worry about them binding stuff up. These rivets, I don't believe require the use of a uh, large rivet gun, but I'm not happy that they put one rivet like right under the strap here, which seems like it would be difficult to access. Yeah, and like the drive shaft's in the way, guys, come on. I'm just gonna go for these fasteners and then push the drive shaft up out of the way to try to get my rivet gun in. Now you may not have to disconnect the drive shaft in order to install these rivets. I had to because of the tool that I was using. Some rivet guns have a lower profile and you'll never have to mess with this drive shaft. But if you have a larger rivet gun like I do, you may need to move the drive shaft in order to install these rivets. I'll have to cut you off later. I'm gonna jump over to the other side, leaving my drive shaft disconnected for now because it's gonna be easy to get to these fasteners without in the way. I have the socket for these, so I'm just gonna run them in. It's a T27. Reinstall that lower brace. Probably didn't need to cut that angle on there, but I'm glad I did. Reconnect my drive shaft. Try to put it back on exactly the way you took it off. Can't forget about our final two rivets. There it is, completely installed. Did you spot where I messed it up? If you said that I installed that large black rivet on the wrong side, you are 100% correct. In fact, that large rivet isn't even used in the all-wheel drive installation. It's actually only used in the two-wheel drive installation. And where it goes, in the all-wheel drive, what you saw here, I had to remove that fastener that held the drive shaft loop down. Well, two-wheel drive doesn't have that drive shaft loop or even a drive shaft there. There's just an empty hole. So that rivet is there to secure the rear of that bracket so you can install the CAT security system. That's where I messed up. So if that's what you called, you're an eagle-eyed viewer and you're awesome. Well done you. With the CAT security installed, you know, it's gonna be a lot harder to come in here with a Sawzall and try to cut this off, not to mention the shielding's in the way. So you're gonna have to get the shielding out of the way to get the catalytic converter, even if you are able to successfully cut it free. And that's gonna take time. And I think that's what's gonna save you. So a, a potential thief would look at this and go, you know what? Screw this, I don't have time for it, and move on to the next one. And that's what you want. You don't want them getting in here. However, <laughs> if you uh, need to replace O2 sensors, it, it's gonna be difficult because you're gonna have to remove this shield in order to access those O2 sensors. If uh, that ever came up, that would be time consuming, which would equate to more labor, which would be more costly. But if you weigh that against replacing this catalytic converter, which I know is about $1,100 from Honda, uh, it would be cheaper, I'm, I'm certain of it. But still, this seems like a, a pretty good deal for what it is, and it seems like it will keep the catalytic converter more secure, for sure. If you're installing one of these systems on a Honda Element, I have a couple of recommendations for you. And the first of which is make sure your catalytic converter is good or in good working condition before you install this system. The entire point of this system is to make it difficult to access the catalytic converter. And if you have a bad one or one that's going bad, well, it's gonna be a lot of effort to replace it. Uh, one of the ways you might do that is, particularly if you have emissions testing in your area, 
take your vehicle to get an emissions test, and what you're looking for is NOx emissions, that's NOx. And if that's high or near the limit, that may indicate a problem with the catalytic converter that needs to be looked into further. Additionally, I mentioned the O2 sensors and access to them being virtually impossible once you install this system. I would recommend that you replace both of those O2 sensors before you install this system, that way you don't have to worry about it. And FYI, Denso makes uh, O2 sensors for Honda, and if you get the Denso ones, they're virtually the same thing and they cost a lot less. So that might save you some money there. With all that said, as far as just general security tips for when you're parking or leaving your vehicle someplace, try to look for well-lit areas, and, and even better if they're monitored by security cameras. Uh, secure parking garages, also really good idea. And that should help cut down on the theft, but I can tell you that if a thief sees this and they're aiming to steal your catalytic converter, I know that they're gonna turn away because that's gonna be way too much work for them to remove that to get to that catalytic converter. They're gonna move on to the next vehicle. So this could potentially save you a lot of money. Cap City Muffler has many of these kits available for a lot of different vehicles, but they haven't covered absolutely everything yet. I'm gonna link them down in the description and I believe there's a form on their website to where you can submit your vehicle information and your contact information if there isn't a kit available for your vehicle at this time. And they'll reach out to you when they have something available. Um, but they will be linked down in the description along with any additional information or anything like that. And I hope this was helpful to you and that these tips are helpful to you and that your catalytic converter does not get stolen because that would suck. It's stupid expensive and I hope you never have to deal with that. This can go a long way to help prevent that. I want to thank Cap City Muffler for helping us for sponsoring today's video and providing the materials here. Once again, they'll be linked down in the description. I'm also going to link EricTheCarGuy.com down in the description if you have automotive questions that I didn't cover. Other than that, thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time.